The Banu Merchantman is a planned ship in Star Citizen. It's very difficult to define simply as it's kind of a mix of cargo hauler, marketplace and home away from home all rolled into one big fancy ship. It's certainly one of the older and more unusual designs but has long been a totem of excitement for many a Star Citizen backer. I'm Forrester and welcome to the Dry Dock a series which delves deeper into the ships of Star Citizen. This video will explore the background behind the Merchantman, both in and out of game, and then take a look at some of the attributes and statistics of the ship before considering how that might all translate into gameplay. There are timestamps in the video description, although if you're interested in the Merchantman, you might prefer to watch this one all the way through. And Whilst this channel usually focuses on what's currently in-game, necessarily this video will navigate the treacherous space that is speculation territory. Whilst every effort has been made to approach this video accurately, sometimes information is sparse and much is subject to change as time goes along and that's especially true of this ship. So please treat the content with a pinch of salt and not as a definitive promise as to what will happen. All of that said, let's dive into the background of the Merchantman. The Banu Merchantman was first identified in October 2013 as a stretch goal for Star Citizen reaching $27 million in funding. An article detailing the clipper ship was subsequently released in November 2014 and thereafter there was dribs and drabs until CitizenCon 2951 when the ship talk portion went into great deal about some of the changes made to the Merchantman. This was followed up in June 2022 with an episode of Inside Star Citizen looking deeper into the Merchantman. The Banu in-game are a species who value working together in a non-hierarchical manner and particularly excel at trade and commerce. The Merchantman is the embodiment of these principles, combining various functions of large cargo stores, a marketplace and meeting rooms to facilitate mercantile activities. Notably, there's no captain's quarters as Banu tend to work together on a more cooperative basis. The Merchantman first went up for sale back in 2013 at a price of $250. Subsequently, the price has gradually increased perhaps reflecting the size and scale of the ship, up to the most recent sale price of $650 from 2022 onwards. The stated purpose for the Merchantman is as a heavy freight ship, but realistically it's so much more than just that. The Merchantman facilitates trade on board the ship itself, offering a marketplace to buy and sell goods and items, both at small scale but also with various amenities to set the scene for high level trades. Based on the most recent calculations, the Merchantman would have a total length of 237 metres, a total width or beam of 203 metres and a total height of 80 metres, making it one of the tallest ships in the game. That said, these calculations are clearly subject to change. The total mass of the Merchantman would be around 9,635 metric tonnes. By way of components, the current specifications listed are also subject to significant change as more details about the ship become available. That said, the specifications outline that power would be provided by two large power plants with cooling supplied by two large coolers. Additionally, the Merchantman would carry a large radar supported by two medium-sized computers. Defensively, the Merchantman would carry two large shield generators. From a propulsion support system standpoint, everything is currently listed as large size, ranging from the intakes to the tanks to the drives, with hydrogen fuel tanks and intakes doubling up with two components. In terms of thrusters, the specifications are clearly still to be determined, with a somewhat confusing mix currently shown on the ship page. By way of armament, the current specifications for the Merchantman list two pilot control weapons, currently marked as size 8, which tuck away into the ship when not in use. 
That's a huge armament if they stay that size, heavier hitting than the weapons on a Perseus or Ares for example. There's a manned turret up top which carries two size 5 weapons, with the development video showing two M7A laser cannons. Further, there are two remote turrets which look to carry size 4 weapons on each, sighted on the wings of the ship. And finally, the specifications list four point defence turrets, likely best suited for engaging incoming munitions. The crew specifications for the Merchantman note a minimum crew of four to a maximum crew of eight. This is one of those ships where it's probably a bit much to expect a solo pilot to operate, especially in riskier territories. Whilst the inclusion of pilot controlled weapons is a plus, the reality of a ship of this size is that it's likely very difficult to manoeuvre, and so manning the turrets is likely going to be important in order to protect that valuable cargo. With two remote turrets, and a manned turret, plus the pilot, that makes a crew of four likely to be the most sensible. Outside of combat, those additional players could be organising the cargo or manning the trading areas for example. By way of amenities aboard, the cargo bay is supposedly at least 2800 SCU, which is considerable. Some of the footage from aboard the ship might even suggest that it's more, with columns of boxes towering over the player. But that cargo isn't just about going from A to B, the merchantman also offers a place to buy and sell aboard. The integrated marketplace includes eight dedicated shops, as well as a conference room and VIP suite for larger trades. For organisations, that might be a cool meeting place, in a similar fashion as the large table aboard the 890 Jump in-game today. There are the usual habitation facilities, albeit a little more communal than on other ships, as well as a medical bay in case trade goes sour. Then there's a hangar bay, said to be compatible with the Banu Defender by design. The merchantman is capable of landing planetside as well as docking in space with a port on each side of the ship. Additionally, there are multiple entry and exit points including a deployable ramp and cargo elevator, as well as routes within the ship depending on whether you're aboard as a visitor or part of the crew, to keep separate areas for each. The primary use case for the Merchantman is likely to be for mercantile activity. Whereas the game loops for buying things at the moment involve heading to the desired shop, the Merchantman is about all of the shops heading to you. The gameplay would be in managing cargo, setting prices, and keeping the ship safe and secure whilst it travels around the verse, offering to buy and sell exotic goods. For a small group interested in meeting other players and trading, that could be an enticing opportunity. The Merchantman also offers quite significant cargo stores, in a somewhat protected space when compared with large haulers like the Hull series. Accordingly, the ship could present an exciting environment to move a large number of goods from A to B, in perhaps riskier space for a fully crewed Merchantman. When first announced, the role of the Merchantman was clear, to offer a bazaar to undertake trade with others, and warehouse all of the goods and items for buying and selling aboard. For many organisations, that role will still be incredibly attractive, and clearly for such an undertaking, the Merchantman would need to be protected. The challenge when it comes to describing fleet operations comes in the form of the Drake Kraken Privateer. Whilst the Privateer is significantly larger and more expensive than the Merchantman, for the largest of orgs in Star Citizen, it also offers some unique advantages, most notably that there are multiple landing pads for ships coming and going, which might more easily facilitate trade from a given location without necessarily having to land planetside. The Merchantman does look to offer more storage than the Kraken Privateer, but at the cost of not necessarily being as easily accessible to get aboard, so that makes the Merchantman more of a hauler than a marketplace when compared to the Privateer. But then, somebody who paid $250 from an LTI Merchantman has most of the functionality at a fraction of the cost, and 
in arguably a more civilised environment than the dank hallways of the Drake Superstore. There is a possibility that if pilot controlled weapons remain at size 8, an offensive merchantman might have a place in the combat lines as a heavy hitter. Whether that remains to be the case, only time will tell. The Banu Merchantman is an iconic ship however, and watching the development progress is enough to fill a citizen with all manner of exciting notions of just what this ship could deliver, both in terms of gameplay and in terms of a unique environment in which to house activity. Understandably, there are many of you out there who are excited about the Merchantman, and so it'll be very interesting to read your thoughts on this ship in the video comments. If you're not yet subscribed to the channel, you might like to do that whilst you're down there, so that you can get the heads up for new videos here, as well as hauling your way over to the like button if you like heavily narrated slideshows talking about fictional spaceships. Otherwise, and as always, thank you for watching.